Hi, my name is Yoshi Samurizumi. I will talk about license compliance and security management for embedded system. The agenda on this slide is a follow. After a brief introduction, I will talk about the problem in software development and SBOM. After I list the problem, I will talk about building a system to solve them. Finally, I will talk about the summary and future prospect. Let me introduce myself. My name is Yoshihisa Morizumi. I work as an engineer at Fujitsu. Since I joined the company, I have been involved in operating system development and technical support. By engaging in the development of a real-time OS, I learn the basic knowledge and structure of the OS. Since then, I have been involved in the development and support of device running Linux. Recently, I also worked on MC kernel in Fugak supercomputer. First, I will talk about problem in software development and SBOM. Let's start with compliant issue. In recent years, the size of software in embedded system has been increasing. A product is made up of a combination of many pieces of software. OSS is often used for software. Software comes from multiple suppliers and, and is ultimately integrated into the product. Product vendor must completely with copyright and license for all software them use. However, information may not be provided by the software supplier or may not be complete. It is also difficult to manage different format for different suppliers. As a result, product may contain unintended software or may not complete may not complete with copyright or license. Secondly, security issues. Embedded system include a variety of open source software. The product is composed by combined OSS and in-house developed software. You should be aware of vulnerability when using OSS. Vulnerability reported daily and fixed by the OSS community. But Depending on the version of software used, the product may contain vulnerability. Vulnerabilities can be exploited to gain unauthorized access to a product or to unintentionally shut down a system. Product vendor need to understand vulnerability and take corrective and mitigated action as needed. Also, bug us inherit in software and even during testing. Bug can be introduced into product. As a result, 
the product may contain probability or bugs. Here is summary of the software development issues we have discussed. The first is compliance. You need to know all of the software component used in the product. You must also comply with this software license and copyright. The second is security. You need to identify vulnerability in the software in the software include in the product and address them if necessary. You also need to ensure code quality. SBOM is a way to solve compliance problems. By the way, what do you think SBOM is? SBOM stands for Software Bill of Materials. A complete list of software parts include in the product. It can be used to protect the software supply chain. There are various ways to implement and create an SBOM. The information required for a SBOM include the author name, supplier name, component name, version string, hash value, and anti -differ. You will also need licensing and priority information. Let's look at how SBOM is used in the software lifecycle. I will explain by following the NTIA materials. For example, when you building software, you can use SBOM to manage what software what software code is included. When you release software, you can use the SBOM to manage supplier name, software name, version number, license, and so on. Software maintenance, software maintenance allows you to manage volatility information in this SBOM. The SBOM works throughout the software lifecycle. Here are three typical implementations of SBOM. SWID stands for Software Identification. It is standardized by ISO. Created by NIST. Designed to provide organization with a way to track the software installs on the device. SWIDs are in XML format. CoSWID is considered as a more lightweight binary format for IoT device. Next, Cyclone DX is created by Open Web Application Security Project. A lightweight SBOM specification designed specifically for software security requirement and related risk analysis. This specification is written in XML with 
json e development spdx stands for software package data exchange it is standardized by iso created by linux foundation spdx provides a standard language for communicating software-related components, license, copyright, and security information in multiple file format. A variety of formats are available. For example, tag value, JSON, YAML, XML, and spreadsheet. This presentation will focus on the easy to use SPDX from Yoked. Yoked is a build tool often used in embedded system development. SPDX can be created in a variety of ways. Here, some of them of different purpose. SPDX can be output when the software is built. The tool in the green frame insert. Those tools include OSS Review Toolkit and Quote Master. Yoktu can output SPDX with Create SPDX or Meta SPDX Scanner. Meta SPDX Scanner invokes external tools of Scan Code Toolkit or Phosology. The tool in the red frame is used by inputting source code after building. Scan code toolkit can scan source code and binary file for license and copyright and output SPDX files. TAN can output SPDX to the installed container image. Phosology can scan the source code for license and copyright, and output SPDX files. The web UI also provides a workflow for compliance. The blue frame is a transformation tool. SPDX.org has a tool for Convert SPDX in additional tool to tool that work with Java and Python. There are also online tools. Postology can handle SPDX in a variety of ways. Compare how to create SPDX when building software with Yoked. Meta SPDX scanner creates the SPDX file by calling Phosology or scan code toolkit. It does not work alone. You need to have another scanner, but you can use one of your purpose. Create SPDX scanner is a new feature of Yoked, available from Yoked 3.4. You don't have to have another scanner. You can use it alone. It's easy to use. Just add line to the Yoked configuration file local.com. Let's reconsider the compliance issue. Now, the 
supplier provide the S-bomb with the software. An S-bomb is complete list of the component and license it contain for the software. In addition, typical implementations such as SPDX facilitate file format conversions. Product vendor can extract all software license and copyright included in the product. The unified format makes management easy. Next, let's talk about building a soft system to solve the problem. Here are some of the problems in software development that I mentioned at the beginning. In recent years, software development for embedded systems often use Yoct. Many development environments provided by hardware vendors are based on Yoct. Build a software development environment that combine Yoct and other tools to solve the problem listed above. Phosology is an open source license compliant software system and toolkit. Contain tools for scan license. Provide a web interface for viewing scanned result and compliance workflow. Meta SPDX scanner passed the source built by Yoct to a scanning tool such as Phosology. It also receives SPDX files from tool like Phosology and add, add them to one of the build output. Code Checker is a source static analysis tool using CLang static analyzer and CLang TD. It has various commands it has various command line tools for performing scan and web interface for managing them. This slide shows the system configuration. Use Docker container to simply system construction. You need to configure the docker. So refer to the documentation if necessary. The URL is shown on this slide. Here is an example of how the system can be used from the user's perspective. When you build software with Yoked, it prints out SPDX file and a list of vulnerability you can refer to it. This source code is automatically registered in Phosology and scanned. You can check and clearing license information for the web UI. The results of this static analysis in code checker can be visited from the web UI. You can check the number of problems and the detail of the problem. We will build a concrete 
system. The minimum yoked setup is shown on this slide. Create a directory to extract the yoked environment and run the following command. A directory called build will be created and move it into it. You must edit the local.conf file in the conf folder to work with code checker and phosology. The code checker settings. Code checker is available on the Docker Hub. So get it with the docker run command. The version number must match the code checker used by meta code checker. Version 6.17.0 is currently in use. The meta code checker configuration is shown in this slide. The name of use for the code checker report endpoint settings must already be created in the web UI. The code checker web UI is accessible on port 8001 on the host. The creation of the product used in code checker report endpoint is shown in this slide. Select new product, enter any required information, and save. You are done when items are added to the list. This is the setting of Postgres that manages the database used by Phosology. Postgres is available in Docker Hub. So start it with Docker run command. After starting Postgres, initialize the database used by Phosology. Create a user named Foshi and a database named Phosology and grant them permissions. The password of the Foshi user specify Foshi. Next, Phosology is available in Docker Hub. So start it with Docker run command. The meta SPDX scanner setting is shown in this slide. Token is the key used to refer to Phosology from meta SPDX scanner. Token is created in Phosology. Phosology is accessible through port 8002 on the host. Log in with Foshi as the user and password. You can create access token from the user account settings in the admin menu. Make it readable and writable. CV checks add a one-line configuration to local.conf. Once you are set it up to the point, build it with BitBake Core Image Minimum. Next, 
I will introduce how to see the result. Access to Code Checker Web UI. Click on the product to see a list of statically parsed source code. Let's select one. Here I selected the source code for the set command. Display any source code issue found. Select one of the indicate problems. We have detected a problem with null pointer access depending on the flow of processing route. Next, access to Phosology Web UI. Log in, select the Browse menu, and the select the Created folder. A list of scanner source code appears. Select the source code to display a list of detect license. Here, I selected the source code for the set command. In the source code detail, you can see the license found and the result of highlighting. The text associated with the license. You can also clear in the detected result. Check the result of CVE check in the host environment. Go to temp deploy CVE from your build directory. You can check that the variety information file has been saved. Similarly, for SPDX files, access temp deploy SPDX from the build directory. You can see the SPDX file is saved. Finally, I will talk about the summary and feature work. SBOM is effective for solving software development problem using OSS. Introduction to how to easily build a development environment that combine Yoct with other tools. In the future, I would like to compare Meta SPDX scanner with Create SPDX, a new feature of Yoct. Also, I would like to consider linking with other tools when building a development environment. For example, the OSS management tool SW360 Please let me know if there are any other good tools. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention.